Hey everyone, I'm Richard, here today taking a look at the Radian RX 470. So I rather like the RX 480, it just offers great performance for its target price point, specifically the $200 4GB model, but curiously, these seem rather thin on the ground now, and now I think I know why. The RX 470 is basically a direct replacement with very, very similar levels of performance. So we've got two models here, an XFX version and an MSI model both of which are factory overclocked out of the box. Now the XFX version seems to be running with faster memory and ever so slightly higher core clocks. So as you can see here in this Crisis 3 benchmark, that's the Swifter card, but there's only like one or two frames per second in it, hardly earth shattering stuff. And actually, given the choice, I'd take the MSI model in a heartbeat. The build quality is markedly higher and the acoustics are just on another level, especially useful when it comes to overclocking. The core inputs and outputs seem to be much the same though, with a very similar port arrangement, a dual link DVI, display port and HDMI 2.0, but there is a difference in terms of power delivery. The MSI model has an eight pin power input, whereas the XFX model has the six pin input that's standard to this board. Now in theory, this means that you should be able to pump more power through the MSI RX4 70, but in practice, you're going to be hitting the limits of the processor before that happens. Okay then, so let's kick off by taking a look at performance. Both the MSI and the XFX models we have hit boost targets in the 1240 to 1250 megahertz range, meaning the fluctuating boosts we saw on the reference RX 480 aren't an issue here. The end result is that both of these cards get very, very close to the 480 we tested. So this is Crisis 3 and here we're comparing the 470 with both versions of the reference 480. We're less than 1 FPS behind the 4 gig 480 and 2 FPS off the target set by the 8 gig card. However, it's interesting to note that all of the Polaris products fall short of the outgoing R9 390 in this test. It's 5 FPS faster than the 480 and 7 FPS faster than the 470. Okay then, but things change up when we take a look at the division. It's a really interesting benchmark. The 470 is 2 FPS off the pace set by the 4 gig 480 and 3 to 4 FPS short of the 8 gig model. However, check out the R9 390 showing. Generally speaking, it is the faster card out of all of them, but in this game, the Polaris products, all of them, including the RX 470, are faster. Now that's not bad at all, bearing in mind the frankly colossal power saving advantage. Now let's move on to Rise of the Tomb Raider here. Here, very high quality, high textures, DX12, once again just one frame per second difference between the MSI 470 we tested and the 4 gig 480, with a 2 FPS differential with the 390 and the 8 gig 480. So I think the point is clear, the RX 470 has slower memory and four fewer compute units than the top tier Polaris 480, but some might say that the performance differential is kind of almost irrelevant in actual gameplay. The end user experience on game that will happily occupy 4 gigs of RAM is essentially identical. And in fact, you can overclock the 470 to go faster than either 480. The MSI model saw the core increase by 9%, which is really impressive, while we pushed RAM as far as it could go. Well, that was only 6.8 gigabits per second, unfortunately, but still, the results speak for themselves. In all cases, we're either ahead or on par with the 8 gig RX 480. So here's Assassin's Creed Unity. From being 4% behind the 480, we're now 4% ahead. Next up, check out Hitman DX12. Now this is an example of how the RX 470 overclock basically brings us up to par with the 480. Lovely stuff, but I think the real takeaway here is that the RX 470, well, let's be frank here, it's not actually that much slower than the 480 at stock speeds. And remember that the XFX version, well, it might be louder, but it's also a bit quicker than the MSI model here too. And actually, well, Let's think about this for a second. If I have two RX 470s, well, why not run them in Crossfire? How does that work out? Well, as usual, it all depends on the game. At its best, two 470s in Crossfire can be brutally fast. So let's aim our sights really high here and stack up Crossfire 470 with GTX 1070 and GTX 1080. First up, Assassin's Creed Unity. Yeah, we're sitting between the two Nvidia heavyweights here. And in fact, we're closer to the GTX 1080. Crisis 3, well, that's not known for its multi GPU scalability. So it lags behind both of the more expensive Nvidia cards. Far Cry Primal, well, that's more 
more in GTX 1070 territory. As long as you handle your VRAM so you're under the 4 gig limit, you're good to go. But, well, the thing about multi-GPU, whether it's Nvidia SLI or AMD Crossfire, well, it's not particularly reliable. Some games don't scale well at all. Some games don't even support the feature at all, meaning you've got a spare GPU sitting there doing absolutely nothing. And sometimes the results can look great on paper and in terms of benchmarks, but the real life experience really sucks. So hey, The Witcher 3 in 470 Crossfire runs at an average of 86 FPS. That's not so far behind the GTX 1070 at 94 FPS, but check out the frame times. That is indeed the legendary micro stutter. Well, it's actually more like macro stutter in the case of The Witcher 3 because you literally can't avoid seeing it. Okay then, so yeah, Crossfire 470, it's an option, but I would always advise on one more powerful GPU as opposed to two lesser models running in parallel. Okay then, so there we go. I rather liked the RX 480. The 4 gig model in particular at $200 represents great value. But availability, well it's curious, it seems to be a bit of a problem, particularly if you want to avoid the reference design. I mean, as far as I know, Sapphire do a 4 gig model, but that's it. Compare and contrast with the RX 470. There's no shortage of them. You can take your pick from a bunch of great thermal solutions and the performance. Wow, for $180, this is an excellent product. 1080p, 60fps, console level settings or better. Right then, this is your boy. Okay then, so that's that. Do like and subscribe if you found the video useful and I'll catch you next time.